Ladies and gents, Mountain Tom has returned to us. After destroying our sandboxes so much that Bungie literally had to sunset it and then nerf it, which is odd because it's like, why sunset it if you're going to nerf it? They have resurrected it though with random rolls and rocket jumping, which I get it. Some of you probably don't care about rocket jumping, but let me just say it's pretty awesome. Anything from like carrying a spark and onslaught or even speed running, you can get some insane heights by using sticky grenades. Yeah, you heard that right. And it's not often that Bungie actually does things for the speed running community, but this is definitely for them. But with that being said, I think it's high time we take a closer look at Mountaintop's random rolls, its new micro missile frame, and go over all the places that it excels in both PvP and in PvE. And yes, Bungie has done everything they can to keep Mountaintop from being meta in PvP, despite them reverting the nerf that made this weapon wildly inaccurate while airborne. So you can now hit your shots while jumping, but more on that in a moment. To start things off though, let's talk perks. In our third column, we have Ambitious Assassin, Impulse Amplifier, Demolitionist, Lead from gold, slick draw, auto loading holster, and overflow. In our fourth column, we have our damage perks, rampage, warpool, adrenaline junkie, one for all, harmony, recombination, and frenzy. Now something to keep in mind guys is every single one of these perks will be enhanceable in the final shape. Even on the shiny variants that has four traits. Yes, all four of those traits will be enhanceable. But I want to turn our focus first to that third column for my PvE players. We have some very popular perks here. The ones that really stuck out to me were ambitious assassin, which is phenomenal on grenade launchers like forbearance led from gold which is great for ammo economy as every time you pick up heavy you're topping off your special and auto loading holster which is just good for running and gunning and then also overflow simply for its enhanced version now i want to start with ambitious assassin this is one of my favorite perks on grenade launchers it reads that it overflows the magazine base on the number of rapid kills before reloading now it's super simple but very strong here on mountaintop ambitious assassin will net us two grenade shots after getting one kill essentially manually overflowing the magazine. Now the enhanced version of Amish's Assassin offers only plus five reload speed, which is still nice. Now, of course it's still capped it at two, but this perk is infinitely chainable. So as long as you're getting one kill from those two shots, you get two more right back. And having two shots from a high damage grenade launcher like this makes cleaning elites up and majors way more manageable, especially once we start talking about damage perks. Now the other perk I wanna look at is Lead from Gold, where picking up heavy ammo also grants ammo to this weapon. Now with the enhanced version of Lead from gold this increases the amount of special ammo you get back per heavy ammo pickup now this perk doesn't help with reload but it's fantastic for ammo economy and i would say in environments where ammo is very strict lead from gold has always been a great option and it'll be a good option here too granted we normally navigate around these things rocking special ammo finisher even inside of onslaught i'm constantly rocking special ammo finisher and this mitigates that issue what lead from gold allows you to do though is use mountaintop essentially like a primary again indebted kindness is like my favorite weapon, the weapon you should be getting from this season, the special sidearm, the god roll is lead from gold and bolt shots. It's nasty, fellas. You should definitely get it. Now, we have auto loading holster. This is always a great one as you can just brainlessly just run forward, get a shot off, and never think about it. Swap to your other weapons, continue doing cleanup. Auto loading holster essentially just automatically reloads the weapon. Now, it takes two and a half seconds, but that goes by very quickly. Now, for those wondering, what about the enhanced version of auto loading holster? Keep in mind, this just drops the amount of time to 2.3 seconds when your weapon auto reloads. This perk allows for a myriad of mountain top play styles within PvE. They can range from quick eliminations to even assisting with boss DPS, especially if you're swapping back and forth to certain weapons, or maybe even procking perks like bait and switch on a heavy weapon. And lastly, I want to talk about overflow. At base, this perk reads picking up special or heavy ammo automatically loads this weapon beyond normal capacity. Now this perk would just overflow our magazine to two, but with the enhanced version, this should actually bring us up to three shots which could be very desirable essentially working like ambitious assassin but with less uptime or at least manual uptime but greater lethality again do keep in mind the play style of mount top in my opinion just works better with auto loading holster but dude at the same time having three back-to-back -back shots uh, almost reminds me of when mount top could auto reload behind rally bear gates now with those third column perks out of the way what about our fourth column perks the ones that really stand out to us are vorpal one for all, recombination, and frenzy. Now I'm gonna start with our most basic perk here, that being Vorpal. This is a 15% damage buff against bosses, vehicles, and guardians within their super. You really can't go wrong with this perk, guys. It's just a flat 15% buff on special weapons. It's nice, it's impactful, nothing too crazy. Here at Carl, it elevates our damage from 50 
69,367 to 68,272. This is especially good if you're using Mountaintop to take on champions or just be a major killer in general. Now an enhanced Vorpal, this will grant us plus five stability, but I do want to compare Vorpal to Frenzy directly as both of these net you a 15% buff. And there's been some debate on which one of these is actually better. Frenzy reads that being in combat for an extended time increases damage, handling, and reload for this weapon until you're out of combat. So essentially guys, after dealing or taking damage for 12 seconds, Mountaintop Beer will receive a 15% damage buff, which is exactly the same as Vorpal. But it also gets a ton of other benefits, plus 100 handling, plus 100 reload, at least until you're out of combat. Now for those wondering what about Enhanced Frenzy, it seems to be currently buffed and provides no benefits. And yes, the damage here at Carl nets you the same, considering it's still that 15% damage buff. But it's that activation time that gives this comparison some nuance. If you take a Mountaintop into any setting where you're straight into the fights, like the bosses in Legend Onslaught, for example, then you will be losing damage. Now, it's not always the case, but there are moments where those high health targets are immediately around you, and Frenzy is not yet proc, whereas Vorpal will be proc'd 100% of the time. But outside of those specific scenarios, when it comes to just like clearing waves of Onslaught, Frenzy will be the better perk from the handling buffs and the reload buffs. And really, this kind of just comes down to your playstyle, guys. Are you mainly leaning into Mountaintop to just chunk down some damage of a high health target, but then swapping back to your primary to do the majority of your work? Or are you trying to utilize Mountaintop like a primary weapon? And I know that sounds crazy because it's a special weapon, but when you have roll combinations like Frenzy and Lead from Gold together, that just screams, hey, use me, literally all the time. But this also takes us to our next damage perk, One For All. This perk reads that hitting three separate targets increases damage for a moderate duration. Now, as long as you hit three enemies within three seconds of each hit, you'll be granted a 35% damage buff for 10 seconds. Now, for Enhance One For All, this brings that duration up to 11 seconds. This is a nice damage buff, guys. Again, kicks our damage up here at Coral from 59,367 to 83,673. The task of activating this perk is very easy, considering that this is a grenade launcher. It has AoE damage. You launch it into a group of enemies, you're gonna attack multiple targets. And I would say the majority of time when an elite spawns, there'll be miners around those elites. And you just target the elites, you'll hit them, you'll do damage, you'll also hit the AoE damage against the miners. Boom, one for all is proc'd. It's a good solid perk, guys. But then I want us to look away from one for all, which is more catered to dealing with many enemies at once. And instead, look at a perk that's all about dealing with that one big enemy. Recombination. Elemental final blows increase the damage of this weapon's next shot. And this perk uses stacks, giving you a flat 10% damage buff with each of those stacks, which means at a max of 10 stacks, we get one micro missile with a 100% damage buff. Now, a huge reason why recombination is going to be the go to trade on Mountaintop is that the enhanced version of this perk will essentially fast track us to that 100% damage bonus. You see, right now it's one to one. So essentially 10 kills will net you that 100% damage buff. But in the final shape, when we can enhance recombination to get 100% damage buff will only require eight stacks, meaning only eight kills. Here at Carl, recombination at max stacks pumps our damage up to 118,733. This is a perfect perk when it comes to dealing with single targets. On top of that, we can use anything. Again, it's not elemental weapon final blows, but elemental final blows. Anything from your abilities and your other weapons, all of these things, your supers, everything here will be tacking on stacks of recombination which means when you do pull out Mountaintop, it's a good chance you're going to have many stacks and very likely you'll have that full 100%. Now, before we move on to the God Roll portion, I want to talk about the Origin trait Indomitability. This breeds that Final Blows grant Grenade Energy when playing a Light subclass or Melee Energy when playing a Darkness subclass. This is a really nice Origin trait here as it grants you somewhere around 5% energy for that respective ability. But it kind of goes against the different identities you can go with when it comes to Mountaintop. Yes, if you're using Mountaintop, as an ad clearing machine, then sure, you're going to be proccing this origin trade a lot. But if you're using it mainly to chew down a high health target, you're not really dipping into it as much. Now, I want to touch on something that's unique to grenade launchers, and that's our grenade launcher perks and blast radius. In the footage you've been watching, we've had spike grenades equipped, as this is still the best mag perk, especially here on specials, as it increases our damage to a whopping 59,367 with spike grenades over a base of 55,040. Now, what about sticky grenades? Does that offer any different damage? Well, it will hit for 57,000. 
10,331, making it worse than spike grenades, but a bit better than the other options. And specifically for damage and blast radius, there is a bit of a change. You see, guys, the lower the blast radius stats, this increases the total damage by about a percent. You can see numbers here with the lower blast radius hitting for 59,711. This is not something you need to go out of your way when chasing down the god roll, but just something to keep in mind. Go for hard launch if you can, which will lower your blast radius and increase that damage just a bit more. Now, this takes us to our PvE god roll. Guys, I'm so torn on this. There's so many things that I really do like on this grenade launcher, which is why I'm going to give you a couple of them. I'm going to start with auto-loading holster and recombination. This is a combination that will excel in both Grandmaster Nightfalls and Onslaughts. The main point of this is that this roll will always be ready, and it benefits from you using the rest of your loadout. If I'm on a Strain Titan or a Sunbrazer Warlock and I'm slaying out with my abilities, and some big boy shows up that needs more than just an ability to die, boom, I've got a recombination mountaintop shot that's going to chunk that health bar down. Even in boss damage, recombination will front load you with a little bit of burst damage as you swap off it to then unload your main DPS weapon. And where other roles are concerned, Mountaintop does one thing really well, and that's single target damage. You see, its blast radius just isn't as good as other grenade launchers. If I wanted an ad clearing grenade launcher, there are a number of other options I would choose. With its micro missile perk, this is really what it's meant to do, which is to hit really hard. Now, I want to give you a couple of examples of why I love recombination, especially at times 10. It can delete here in Onslaught, and this is legend, half a champion's health bar in an instant. If we were radiant with a weakened debuff, that's about 80% of the health bar gone, making champions very easy cleanup. Inside of Grandmaster Nightfalls, if we have a times 10 recombination shot, that does about 25% of a champion's health bar by itself, and 35% if you could stack radiant and weaken. Now, I'm not saying I'm not intrigued by other perk combinations. An ambitious assassin recombination roll, if you can guarantee the kill, it's pretty good. Or even an overflow roll would be pretty good as you'll net yourself two shots so that when you do swap over, you got two back-to-back -back shots. But keep in mind, only one of those is taking advantage of recombination. Could you go that lead from gold frenzy roll? Sure. But at the same time, guys, I gotta ask, why would you use this over forbearance or salvage or salvo? And yes, I know chain reaction is getting a nerf, but then we also have wave frames like undercurrent with volt shots. The point is, mount top can be an ad clearing machine, but currently right now, I think wave frames just has it beat. With that being said, though, Let's compare the damage. How does Mountaintop's single target damage compare to twin fire grenade launchers like Water Flight or our standard grenade launchers like Salvage or South or even our wave frames like Forbearance? Running the numbers here at Coral, again, Mountaintop hits at 59,367. Wild Style, our previous highest damage GL, deals 48,722 damage. Salvage or Salvo hits for 34,396 with Forbearance at 29,137. Guys, as you can see here, Mountaintop and really any future micro missile frame grenade launcher are the kings of special grenade launcher damage. And that's really what I think this geo should be in your arsenal. Especially as we move into the final shape with the new transcendence mechanic, we're going to see options like Mountaintop and other kinetic weapons that will contribute to both bars simultaneously. And if those gains are based on damage and not just hits, then our high damage Mountaintop could potentially be a great option here. Now to close out our review here for Mountaintop, how does it perform in PvP? Well, Bungie succeeded. They wanted to make sure that this weapon never returned to the PvP meta. And honestly, guys, this version never will. Direct impacts deal only 158 damage. This makes the one shot, especially considering our health has literally been increased in this new sandbox. For my mountaintop lovers, you're not going to get the one hit kill. Now, could you do it with recombination? Sure. But currently right now, it's bucked. You see, recombination with max stacks should net us the one shot kill. But right now, it does not increase damage at all. But keep in mind, guys, that's a lot of work. When you could just literally put on any other special weapon and get that one hit kill. So yes, Bungie did a number on this to make sure Mountaintop wouldn't be slaying out in PvP. Now, I used to use Mountaintop almost like a utility special. I would use sticky grenades and I would place my Mountaintop shots around the map so that when people would step over them, I would clean them up with my primary. And that was my play style with Mountaintop. But let me just say, even this play style leaves much to be desired. Two entire shots detonating at once only deal 152 damage. Yes, you can use sticky grenades place them around the map, but you're not going to be doing as much damage. Hell, just a week and a half ago, we were using the OG Mountaintop before this change, and we were doing over 100 damage from just the sticky grenades being placed on the ground. Mountaintop could also get the one-hit kill when direct impacted. So the point I'm trying to make here, guys, is that it has been severely nerfed inside of PvP. Now, if I had to choose my gun roll for Mountaintop for my PvP players, this was a tough one, guys, because quite honestly, it's just
just so bad. I tried multiple games to make Mountaintop work. I tried Impulse Amplifier. I was like, okay, maybe we can like stack on the extra velocity and full send this into somebody's head. But that's if you hit him. Harmony is kind of a role that I'm looking at so that if I get a kill with my energy weapon, I at least get a 20% damage buff. And I would say maybe auto loading holster and harmony is what I'm going to be looking at for PvP. Now, I know some of you are probably like, Cross, there's no way in hell Mountaintop is not good in PvP. To you guys, I urge you, go try it out. And it's a good chance by the end of it, you'll be deleting that weapon. So guys, that is our review here from Mountaintop. Let me know in the comments below if we missed anything. We will be having special damage testing, which includes Mountaintop, and just comparing it across the board to everything else. I know this isn't necessarily a DPS weapon, but again, one of the biggest benefits of Mountaintop is that you don't have to land crits. And we did a few damage phases with it against Greg, and I was impressed. Definitely not the best by no means, but again, DPS testing will be out in a few days. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.